We're here today, as you probably guessed, to hear from the two most recent recipients of the Nobel Memorial Prize for Economics. First, a few words from the president of the University of Chicago, Robert J. Zimmer. Uh, good morning. Uh, it's very exciting to be here uh, today to recognize two extraordinary University of Chicago faculty members whose work on the empirical analysis of asset prices has earned them a Nobel Memorial Prize in economics. Uh, they share the prize today with uh, Professor Robert Schiller of Yale University. Uh, joining me today are uh, Provost Tom Rosenbaum and Mario Small, Dean of the Social Sciences Division. Uh, Sunil Kumar, uh, Dean of the Booth School, wishes he could be here today, but he is in Hong Kong uh, working to establish the school's new campus there. I'm also joined by Professor John Heaton from the Booth School and Professor John List, Chair of the Economics Department. Uh, I know there are a few other Nobelists uh, in attendance. Uh, Gary Becker is here, and I believe I also saw Jim Cronin uh, here. So uh, let me introduce Professor uh, Eugene Fama, the Robert R. McCormick Distinguished Service uh, Professor of Finance at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. Professor Fama developed the efficient market hypothesis, which broke new ground in understanding how markets use information and how that affects pricing. Uh, and now let us recognize Professor Lars Hansen, the David Rockefeller Distinguished Service Professor in Economic Statistics and the College. Professor Hansen is a leader in economic dynamics and was recognized for statistical methods he developed for testing rational theories of asset pricing. Together, their work has helped the modern study of economics, has helped shape the modern study of economics, and had a profound impact upon practices in financial markets. The University of Chicago's distinctive intellectual culture draws fearless and creative scholars from across the globe. It is this environment in which ideas and intellectual challenge are cherished as the highest value that leads to the kind of path-breaking work that is recognized with Nobel Prizes. Professor Fama and Professor Hansen join 87 other Nobel laureates who have been affiliated with the university, including today's recipients. Uh, eight members of our faculty are Nobel Prize winners, six of them in economics. Uh, Professor Heaton. Well, uh, this is a great day, of course. Um, I'm John Heaton. I'm uh, one of Gene's colleagues in the finance group here. I'm also a, a deputy dean uh, here at the Booth School. Um, I was told I had three minutes to talk about Gene, and um, I, it's almost it's impossible to delineate all of his contributions, obviously, in, in, in three minutes. Let me just say a few words about his research. I, I mean, Gene's uh, research has always been pathbreaking, every single bit of it, every paper he's written uh, from his early work on, on efficient markets, which both revolutionized academic finance but had tremendous impact on the way in which markets are organized now. I mean, the, the roots of the index funds that we all participate in, you can go back to Gene for. Just a phenomenal impact on the practical world and, and really on people's lives. Um, you know, he's done uh, work in corporate fin finance and monetary economics. It's just, it's breathtaking. Um, let me just say a few words about Gene as a colleague. Something, uh, you know, for those of us that know him, he's just a wonderful human being and an amazing colleague. He's in the office every day, but his door is wide open. You can go and talk to him anytime. 
uh, and engage in uh, uh, discussion with him on uh, topics of economic import. He's also you know, a phenomenal mentor to his students. I was not a student of his, but I've uh, certainly watched him from afar. Let me just give you an example. This morning, right? He wakes up, he gets a Nobel Prize. Great day. What does he work on? Teaching. He taught his class this morning. Just his, the seriousness with which he takes every academic endeavor and how he really enriches the lives of us as students and his colleagues are uh, it's, it's just phenomenal. So let me introduce Gene. Um, it's a pleasure. Congratulations, Gene. you. Um, and I say this, I say, I've said this many times before, that whatever I am owes at least two-thirds of it, maybe three-quarters, maybe 90 percent, uh, to the University of Chicago. When I started here, I got to work with incredible people, Merton Miller, Harry Roberts, Lester Telser, Benoit Mandelbrot, who visited me uh, very often, and they shaped my thinking in the early years in which the efficient markets hypothesis uh, was developed. And then over the years, um, the school, the economics department has only gotten stronger. And the interaction that you get from your colleagues is so influential in building our work that you cannot underestimate its impact. I know I spent two years away from the university visiting another country. And when I came back, I had 16 written papers, and I showed them to Merton Miller, and he said, junk, 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 junk. <laughs> this one's pretty good. But if, had I been here, I would have avoided all the junk, 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 junks. And <laughs> my, I would have uh, progressed much more uh, rapidly. And I really value the fact that we have many points of view expressed in the, in the, in the school, and finance, and in all other uh, disciplines. Everybody contributes to everybody else's work. We argue vociferously, but it's never personal. And that's a very unique atmosphere to be involved in. So I'm very grateful to be a member of the University of Chicago for 55 years. If you, well, let's see, is that right? No, sorry. <laughs> It's only 54, actually, so. <laughs> As the chairman of the Department of Economics, I must proclaim that today is a great day for Chicago economics. Uh, I want to begin by congratulating Jean Fama for earning the Nobel Prize. Congrats again, Jean. I would also like to extend a congrats to Bob Schiller from Yale University, whose work helped us understand bubbles and price reactions to new information. Finally, I would like to congratulate the youngster of this group, my colleague Lars Hansen. In 1982, Lars developed the generalized method of moments, a new and elegant way to estimate many economic models that requires fewer assumptions and is often more powerful than other methods. When I first learned about the approach when I was in graduate school, I thought, wow, this is unbelievable. I can focus on one certain linkage say asset prices in the market economy without having to model the entire system at the same time. This is powerful pioneering work. 
In, in subsequent work, Lars showed how these methods could be applied to a large class of macro models and finance models. In this way, Lars' work is instrumental for testing the advanced propositions put forth by Gene and Bob Schiller. Lars' fundamental advances in the use of methods to assess dynamic economic models form the cornerstone of bridging the gap between economic models and economic and financial data. Well, the Nobel Prize Committee cited Lars for the empirical analysis of asset prices, today the tools that Lars has developed are commonly used by all social scientists. Whether it is to explore how public policies affect unemployment rates, how networks form, or how environmental regulations influence productivity growth, Lars' work plays a key role. But Lars' reach here at Chicago goes well beyond academic publications. Lars has served an incredible role model for decades of scholars here at Chicago, showing us what hard work, perseverance, and a love for economics can accomplish. I am proud to call myself a colleague of Lars. Without further delay, I give you my colleague, Lars Hansen. Congratulations, Lars, and keep up the good work. So thank you very much. Um, I feel truly lucky today. Uh, I think I first have to acknowledge the incredible support for my family, which has been critical to my, to my entire research career. I'm thinking back on this. Um, a couple of years ago, my, my two mentors, Sims and Sargent, got the Nobel Prize at, at, uh, at Princeton. And their, in, in, in their um, press conference, they both happened to mention me. So I figured, wow, that's it. It's good. <laughs> I got my attention. <laughs> I, I felt very good about that. So it, 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 this is a very nice surprise. Um, <clears throat> I've benefited a lot from some wonderful co-authors, uh, you know, people like Bob Hodrick and Scott Richard and Ken Singleton and early, you know, early in my career. Pretty much um, I learned finance from my colleagues and from my co-authors and, and, and that was tremendously beneficial to me. Um, at Chicago, I've, I, I've just com continued to be uh, challenged by you know, people like John Cochran and John Heaton and Jim Heckman who tell me why I'm, I, I'm, I'm, uh, my, my thinking is fatally flawed and the like, and so it's, 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 this has all been tremendously useful. But you know, kind of like Gene, I really feel like this environment here really is something special. Um, for me, when I arrived, I had people like uh, <coughs> Gary Becker and Jim Heckman and Bob Lucas as, uh, as, as kind of role models, and, and they were rather intimidating role models, to say the least. Uh, they, they, they showed an incredibly high degree of um, intellectual uh, enthusiasm, but for them, economics was supposed to do something. It was supposed to explain the world, and it was supposed to be critical. It wasn't, and, and it was supposed to have uh, theoretical coherence, but empirical underpinnings as well. And 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 um, so I think of that as being really critical. And they've kind of maintained. I mean, in the sense that there's a Chicago school, I think that's a really critical part of it. And the other thing is the. Um, uh, the interaction between various different subfields. I think the Chicago economics has been better than most economics around the, around the country, around the world, in terms of forging connections between fields and subfields and the like. And I think a lot of the interesting synergies and connections have come between as we kind of explore linkages between various different areas with, uh, within economics. So I, you know, like Gene, I really feel like I owe this place a lot, and I really think that that is a critical part of what the University of Chicago is. Thank you. To my fellow members of the university community, we will have a chance in the very near future to uh, celebrate Sir Fama and Professor Hansen. We have a few minutes now. We're joined by representatives of 
agencies representing media around the world, and we promised them a few minutes to uh, ask questions of Professors Fama and Hansen. Um, so what I'd like to do, because we don't have mics for each of you, is ask you to stand up when I recognize you, say your question as loudly as you can. I'll try to relay it to the crowd, and then perhaps we can ask the professors to, to join us. Who would like to ask a question? Questions from the media. Yes. Where were you and what was going on when you got the call? <laughs> I, I was preparing my class, actually. Um, it was 5 o'clock, but they called at 6. But 5 is late for me, so. Uh, it's uh, Portfolio Theory and Asset Pricing. It's a class I've been teaching for a very long time. Uh, so I'm also an early riser. Uh, I, I, I was scheduled to go exercise with a trainer at, um, <laughs> at about 6.15 or so. And so I, and my first job was to get our dog out for a walk. So I was up uh, <laughs> very early taking dog uh, doing dog walking and getting ready to go off and exercise when I got the call. So. <laughs> my immediate reaction. Well, um, first I want to make sure this is all real, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, an old friend of mine from uh, Stockholm was on the Nobel Committee named Torsten Pearson. When he got on the phone and, and, and talked to me, I guess I became convinced it was, it was legit. <laughs> Any other questions? What are your plans for the rest of the day beyond the uh... Plans yeah. for the day. The problem is you can't make plans anymore. <laughs> your life is taken over. It's gone. <laughs> So, so I was supposed to be hearing John Cochran talk in a few minutes Me about too. his latest research. I, we'll see if that happens. <laughs> and, and the other thing is I've, uh, I've got some very energetic graduate students that I meet in the afternoon, so I'm still looking forward to that. Any other questions? One question. Degree, to what degree do you talk with your graduate students and graduates about current events such as the shutdown? Uh, that's not something that's uh, central to my course, so I don't talk about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you want to get me in private, though, I'll give you some strong <laughs> views. <laughs> yeah, I also tend not to delve in the current events. <laughs> As young economists, did you think As about young, winning the Nobel Prize? As young economists, I thought about how am I going to feed my family? Yeah. <laughs> because I'll, we had a very large family. <laughs> I was worried if, worried if I could get tenure or not. So. Well, the ver world is a very uncertain place, and you expect that to be reflected in asset prices. You expect to see a, a lot of volatility in asset prices. One of the criticisms of efficient markets during the 2008 period was that volatility was very high, but volatility is always very high in bad times. That's precisely what you expect in an efficient market. So uh, I thought that was a great experiment and it validated what we had been talking about. I, I was the only one in the world that saw it that way. Though, so. <laughs> yeah, it seems to me that um, uncertainty is, is potentially important because it can it have big consequences because it can induce extra cautious behavior and kind of what, you know, uh, how it induces that cautious behavior becomes really important. It, it, it can effectively it can influence new productive enterprise and the like. So I think it's critical to understand it and, to, and it has important policy ramifications. 
We have time for one or two more questions. Anybody? Please. How did current or past students contribute to your work? Oh, I, I, I can't distinguish between student, students, colleagues, um, lots of my past students became colleagues or became colleagues at other universities that contribute to your work uh, through their work and through commenting on your work. So it's a, there's a continuous interchange. At, at the, in the beginning, it's kind of one-sided when they're getting formed in their formative education years, but then it goes the other way later on, in the, in the best of circumstances. So I've been very lucky to have uh, a long list of very, very good graduate students over the years. I'm very proud of this, and I'm, I've, I've been very lucky, and I think Chicago has helped to provide it. You, know, you might think that students are ones who kind of show appropriate respect for, for their advisors and the like. Uh, I've been. Uh, most of my best students are more than happy to tell me where I'm wrong and flawed <laughs> and, uh, and uh, more than happy to expose the gaps in my understanding. So uh, I, uh, my graduate students over the years, current and former ones, have been some of my best colleagues. That's been critical in my research. One more question. Will winning the my, Nobel... My, my experience this morning says no. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> okay, thank you all very much for joining us here today.